The Lions' first preseason game is in the books. Hutchinson's a beast, and the defense is looking a little sketchy. Let's talk Lions. Welcome back to an all-new episode here at Let's Talk Lions. My name is Jay. Thank you for hanging out. Thanks for being a part of what we're doing here. Lions' first preseason game is in the books, and there is a lot that we can take out of it. So I just wanted to kind of break it down, tell you what I saw, and hear what you guys saw. Drop it in the comments as the video is rolling. We're going to kick this thing off with the number two overall draft pick, our number one, Aiden Hutchinson. Second down and two. Allison will get it in. He's taken down in the backfield. Look who. Let's run that back, shall we? You saw from him at the University of Michigan. Tackles for a loss. TFL. It should be his middle name. Need I say more? No. I, I don't need to say more. However, I'm gonna because I want to. Hutch is literally everything that we seemingly needed here in Detroit up front on that D-line. Now, it is very early. It's just a preseason game. However, what we really have to take in here is... That was Hutchinson up against a nine, eight year veteran, all pro tackle, and he just gave him the old one two swim, busting through, and was able to stop that running back dead in his tracks. Watching that happen, this has been something for the last years that I have just been longing for up front on our D line is a guy who can actually apply pressure, and watching him do it against the starting crew against an all pro tackle immediately was nothing but like it just brought so much joy Hutchinson is truly seemingly everything that we needed again it's going to take time there's going to be mistakes along the way there's going to be bumps as he's a rookie however that initial that that initial play was more than I anticipated off the bat in a preseason game and not only that play but you see him again making plays there was another play a little bit later where the right tackle just made an egregious holding penalty against hutch because hutch would have blown up the running back and he got twisted around and basically the guy was giving him a bear hug from behind and uh you know what pretty happy with what we saw coming out of hutchinson next up is jared Goff. It is worth noting that the coaching staff was going to sit Goff even though they were playing just about every other starter. And Goff was like, nah, that ain't happening. And he went to Campbell, came before him and was like, yo, I'm playing in this game. If our men are out there and they're all fighting, I'm fighting too. I'm not sitting out just because I'm the starting quarterback. And he saw that. He saw that his men were going out there. He fought for it because it was his conviction to go play with them, to go lead this squad. And first and foremost, that is worth noting as, yeah, that's leadership caliber. That is that is what a quarterback should be like. That's what your starting QB needs to be. Is a guy who says, I'm going out there and I'm going to dog it with the men because if they're doing that for me, if they're putting their bodies on the line, why would I not? So I was super pleased, super excited to hear that Goff made that decision in and of himself. From there, his performance in that first drive and in the only drive that the starters got to play was great it was great he went three for four he had 47 passing yards about 11.8 yards per reception and he had that nice long shot down to st brown the scoring drive was beautiful the whole way down feels like it's been a while since i've seen the lions on an opening drive score td again preseason however it was still exciting especially because everybody operated at a fairly high capacity something that i'm huge on with golf that i think everybody needs to be is establishing that run game so that you can have the run pass option and that's what golf did that's what he was able to do with swift and it worked out you saw that come to life even that play to st brown was simply him establishing the play action faking it off to i, I believe it was swift find st brown beautiful shot that's what you need. That's what Goff needs. What the Lions need is to establish that early. And with this run game with Swift, as we saw him being able to change directions for that TD, it's going to be dynamic. Establish that run game early, then use the play action in your favor. We know that's what Goff needs. It was great to see that come out here early. Number three, the O-line is poised to be S tier. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, and you obviously haven't played very many video games and or just RPG games in general. But I'm talking top tier 
That's what this O-line is. We saw them come out strong, holding back the D-line, watching finally this O-line play together for the first time was just a thing of beauty. They gave Goff the time to be able to sit back there, find the route, make sure the route develops, hit the guy. That is huge. With that O-line comes everything. Everything else will fall into place offensively. Next up, Tom Kennedy. Man, I don't know how he does it, but he continues to make himself a viable option and a necessary like, hey, you deserve a spot on this roster. He had eight receptions out of 12 targets, 104 yards, 13 yards per reception, and he just looked great to the point where I'm like, I think Kennedy has earned a spot over Quintus Cephas. And you may disagree, that's fine. Quintus Cephas can't stay healthy, and I'm sorry, Tom Kennedy is performing well. I think he has earned himself a spot on this roster especially until Jameson Williams comes back. Tom Kennedy proves himself over and over again to be somebody who's consistently consistent. And I know, maybe you look at him and you're like, oh, well, you know, he's smaller. He's, he's kind of got that Danny Amendola vibe. And we have a wide receiver room that's kind of getting built out pretty well. Does Tom Kennedy fit in there? Yeah, I think he does. Now for some of the ugly from the preseason game. Tim Boyle. Boyle is an absolute liability for Detroit. If Goff goes down, if Goff goes down to an injury, it's going to be the response that we all saw after Squins kissed Wendy Peppercorn in the sandlot. Oh man, he's a deep sh We're doomed. Literally, the backup quarterback situation in Detroit is puzzling. It is not good we will be in uh, deep shambles and you can expect to lose out i really think blau is a better qb2 than boyle period and i know that the lions coaching staff keeps putting boyle in that qb2 in that number two backup spot but he does not deserve to be not with what we've seen blau has to be the backup quarterback and even that you're like okay well there's a game manager question mark sort of not really so what should the Lions even do here? This is me asking you at this point, do the Lions go make a play for Jimmy G? Does that create too much of a power shift, power struggle at the quarterback position? If you bring in Jimmy G and you look at him and you're like, you're the backup. You're only going in if golf goes down with an injury. Does that prolong the amount of time that the Lions need to make a draft selection for a quarterback? Bringing in Jimmy G also tax on $24 million, so there's a lot that goes into it. However, you could extend the period where the Lions don't got to go get a QB. You bring in a guy who has shown himself to be capable, or again, does that create too much of a power dynamic, uh, power struggle at the QB position? We know that Holmes, we know that the Lions are committed to Goff this season, and Goff has proved himself to be QB1. I really think so. We will see. Drop your thoughts in the comments about that. Should Jimmy G, should the Lions go make a play for him or not? Let me know. But Boyle is an absolute liability. Another thought, Jared Davis is still Jared Davis. He is, there's like flashes and moments of, wow, that, that was great. That was a great play. Look at you, you know, finding your way through, hitting the QB or hitting that running back early. But then there's also the moments where you're like, you're just a heat-seeking missile where whoever created that heat-seeking missile forgot to put in the heat-seeking capability. Therefore, you're just a friggin' rocket on the loose and you can't find your target. And that is incredibly infuriating. It just, it looked like Jared Davis of years ago when we had him. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, he's quick. He's got some speed. But as a whole, I don't th I don't think Jared Davis is making making this squad. I don't know if he can make this squad, especially based on what we saw <laughs> he just the other night. Speaking of Jared Davis, looking at the defense as a whole defensively, my friends, we got a lot of work to do. You look at the linebackers, and I know that we put in the uh, the youngins, the young men. For this preseason game, Alex Anzalone didn't see the field, you know, wasn't out there, didn't see the start. However, when you look at Pittman, when you look at Barnes, Malcolm Rodriguez, these guys, you can see that they're young. And it's going to take time for them to grow, for them to develop 
as a whole. Both of those guys, Barnes and Rodriguez, did show moments of like, wow, you saw Malcolm Rodriguez on that first kick return. Get out there, make the play, make the stop. And it was beautiful. But when it came to uh, linebacking, we had our difficulties. And the linebacking core scares me. There's still so much youth there. Again, Alex Anzalone wasn't out there. When he is, you have leadership. You have that vet. That's, thank God, we have him. Because the linebacker core as a whole, not uh, a little spooky. A little uh, October 31st spooky, if you know what I mean. And then bouncing back a little bit further, you have the secondary. And Jeff Okuda got to see the field for the first time in a game-like scenario since San Francisco last year when he got hurt. So that was really great to be able to see Okuda just on the field. To me, that's a W. Now, as a whole, he neither shined nor did he look bad. He just sort of existed. But I will say that that existence was enough for me, just being able to see him take the field he still needs a ton of reps he still needs time out there more game time so i hope to see him in the following two preseason games because i think he needs it he needs that game mode mentality to get mentally back in the game look man all in all our defense last year under aaron glenn gave up about 27 i think it's 27.5 points per game and that's atrocious that's that is not good that is not playoff caliber uh, that is not championship caliber. That's not division winning caliber. So Aaron Glenn has a lot of work to do with these guys because defensively, defensively, there's still just a ton of work. Aiden Hutchinson comes in and that's big up front. However, the linebacking core is suspect. The secondary is going to be <laughs> defensively. This is not just an uphill battle. And I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just being honest with you, especially what we saw from the preseason game. It's not just an uphill battle. This is an up mountain climb. This is, there's a ton of work to do. And so I think you as a Lions fan, myself included, as Lions fans, we have to understand going into this 2022 season, expect to see points still put up on us pretty heavily because Atlanta's opening drive them marching down the field and putting up seven not acceptable not acceptable like there were plays where yeah Hutch came in he makes that beautiful stop and then there's other ones where you're like where where's the second where's the linebacking core here Mariota just rolling out running down and it became very frustrating and it was once again illuminating of our greatest struggle and it's defensively I think the Lions looking at that game if we play like that man the Lions could very well be at the bottom of the uh, points per game once again. That needs to be upgraded. What will Glenn be able to do? How is he going to be able to make these guys step up and develop, grow, and shrink that point deficit? Because we need to. 27 and a half? Unacceptable. We got to get that down. And then offensively, obviously, we got to get that up. And I think we will this year. Goff is looking comfortable. Goff is looking good. I think we're going to be able to raise that average of points per game offensively. It's defensively. Can we bring it down? Because that, that was egregious. I just think it's worth knowing as Lions fan. Yeah, there's a lot of hype. There's a lot of excitement about some of the moves that we've made, what we're doing. And be excited. Be excited. You deserve to be. I deserve to be. However, we have to remember this is the second year of a rebuild. This is the second year under Dan Campbell, under Aaron Glenn, with a new OC coming in with Ben Johnson. So my friends, playoffs is not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed for anybody, but it's especially not guaranteed for us. We have to really mentally accept that and understand that. What you have to do is really watch these games, watch these preseason games, see these guys and understand the good, the bad, the ugly, and be expecting that coming into this season offensively our o-line is amazing they really are as i said s tier golf looks comfortable wide receiver room is getting built out looks good a lot of excitement there defensively be aware man that we could be letting up a lot of yards in the secondary and uh this isn't a magical overnight fix this is time this is development this is growth this is leadership so uh, that's my rant for today just 
remember, the Detroit Lions still have a lot of work to do. Nothing is guaranteed. I think wildcard is possible, but a successful season for Detroit this year is eight wins. That's success. But that's just my own personal opinion here at Let's Talk Lions. Thank you again for hanging out. Thank you for subscribing to the channel, for liking the video, for sharing it with your grandmother if she also wears Honolulu blue on Sundays. Because, you know, that's you should do it. It's good. She might like it. She might hate it. She might be like, this guy sucks. And you're like, Grandma, be kind. He's human. She's like, no, seriously. And then I'm hurt. You're hurt. She's not hurt. Maybe she's happy. I don't know. This one got away from me at the end here. So. <laughs> okay.